Hey, welcome back. This is Mike Burris with Spirit Music Meetups, where you can uh, comment on the bottom of this video to help others. You know, we're supposed to each bring a lesson. That's what 1 Corinthians 14, 26 says. So look at the body ministry and the teaching tab. So this is not one guy wearing all the hats. I have a lot of hats, but you have hats too. So we're on blog topic number two of unconditional love, dealing with a really touchy subject. Uh, I hear a lot of Christians go off the deep end on this. It's really caused from horrible translations of the Bible and horrible preaching from those horrible translations. The Bible was not written in English. It was written in Greek. And sometimes it takes 17 words to describe uh, good when Jesus says only God is good. So you're not going to get any idea of what... <laughs> He's talking about until you know what the word agathos means. And so you can use these tools, Bible Hub and uh, Classic Net Bible are really great. So we're on the subject, unconditional love sometimes has to be tough, uh, but it is still love. So it is called a just judgment. So let's look into that. God's tough love. Okay, This is a really tough subject, <laughs> pardon the pun says, I have an exhaustive 29-page study, if you want. It's called uh, Forgiveness Versus Judgment. With all the Bible references, language studies, historical proofs, and all this. So you can hit the contact page if you're interested. But I'm going to hit some of the key things here. In our politically correct environment, it seems everybody is quick to quote Jesus. He says, uh, judge me, not impossibility. Uh, I'm sorry, may is a Greek word, may, not impossibility. Judge, not impossibility, and you will not impossibility be judged. So we like to quote him, but almost always take him out of context. But a fuller version links this to uh, this word, kata dikazo, kata dikazo, condemn as guilty, impossibility not, and you will not impossibility be condemned. So he's linking it. So the Greek words for linking means they're coupled together. Uh, and then he says, uh, forgive and you will be forgiven. So I gave you the verses of this. In this latter version, because of the connection to condemnation, which is krino judgment, krino is the word where we get criticized or critique uh, in mind, is likely an act uh, acting like a court judge who separates into two piles, right? Guilty and not guilty. To free or loose people as either innocent or bind them or and condemn them as people as guilty. So you're binding the guilty and condemning. You're passing sentence and you're saying you're guilty, this is your sentence, and then you're loosing, you're releasing the innocent, those who are not guilty. This is not an absolute fact. Notice he uses... Uh, may instead of ooh, which is absolutely in, in, in fact. So this is setting up a possibility. This allows for God's unconditional loving of, uh, favor of grace. See, grace is undeserved, unmerited. Through the blood of Christ to exact justice uh, upon our failures, thus the final uh, thought, forgiveness. Okay, so what he's saying is, Look, he can forgive because even though we don't merit forgiveness, he can forgive, and that's called grace. We also have to remember that Jesus is talking to Jewish people on a hillside. In the early part of his ministry, not to his Christian apostles, later in his ministry, uh, who will give the, he will give the keys of the kingdom of heaven, so whatever they bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever they loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So this is, there's two different ministries going here. Nor to render to Caesar what is Caesar's authority uh, that judge have in that judges have in civil courtrooms by keeping law and order to maintain society from falling into chaos, where evil people would be quick to oppress the innocent, which Paul makes clear we are to obey as ordained by God as we will speak of next. Okay, so what am I saying here? There, there are judges that God sets up who exact judgment, guilty or not guilty. 
They don't show grace. They show justice. They, they look at the evidence. They say you are guilty or not guilty. There is no grace involved here, right? That's called favoritism, and judges are not supposed to show favoritism. So we're not talking about Christ's judgment that is through his blood. Jesus, Father, God, sees that you have the blood covering of Jesus. Jesus already paid for your crimes. So now he can release you and justice has been served because Christ served the justice. That's different. So Jesus says, render what to Caesar what is Caesar's. And we are supposed to obey the authorities that are God has placed over us. Um, and that keeps societies from going into chaos. So they weren't asking Christians to rebel against Rome. That was the zealots. The Roman zealots were the ones killing the uh, Jews. The Jews were killing the Roman zealots. I'm sorry, I'll get this right. The Jewish zealots were killing the Romans, right? But that, that's not what Christianity was calling for. So what is he saying? Judge not impossibility and impossibility will not be judged. This, this is key verses, judging crino, separate or, or distinguishing uh, as separating grain from the chaff, uh, picking or choosing by separating, and this is judicial judgment, and he's linked it to condemnation. So he's saying, don't set yourself up as the judge who is going to look at evidence and then condemn that person for an eternity, uh, that's what condemnation. So he's linking this. It's, it's not talking about critiquing or using your uh, understanding mind to determine whether this person can be trusted or not. So, that, you know, we take things out of context. So Paul says in Romans 13, 1 through 7, let every person be subject to the governing authorities. For those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed. And those who resist will incur crema, judgment. This comes from crino. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to evil. Would you have no fear, that is reverential fear or awe, respect, of the one who is in authority? Yeah, you should respect him. Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval, for he is God's servant for your good, for your benefit. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subjugation, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience, for because of this you also pay taxes." For the authorities are ministers or servants of God, attending to this very thing. Pay to all what is owed to them. Taxes to whom taxes are owed. Revenue to whom revenue is owed, right? If you have a business. Respect to whom respect is owed, right? If you, like you have a, if you're a slave, back then they had servants, right? Slave. So you got to respect your master. Honor to whom honor is owed. There is so much written in the Bible condemning anarchy and lawlessness. This is very clear. So let's see how this ties in with judging. Uh, Jesus isn't, isn't so much against judgment as so many Christians believe. I've been quoted this. Oh, you shouldn't judge because Jesus said judge not. That's not the context. We've got to understand words are not taken out of context. He also said, why do you absolutely, in fact, uh, okay, Jesus said, why do you absolutely, in fact, not judge for yourself what is right. See, now Jesus is saying, you should use judgment. You should, you know, judge. But again, context is everything. And he said also, do not impossibility, do not impossibility judge by appearances, but instead judge with righteous, just equability, crisis judgment. So he, he really saying, yeah, you should use righteous, equitable uh, me, uh, means, criteria, righteous, just, and equitable criteria of crisis judgment. You should. <laughs> so Jesus is telling them uh, in some places that you really should be using uh, righteous judgment, equitable, just, just judgment. And he's saying, uh, 
you should have been doing this. And he's questioning why. So go look at those verses. Again, it's all about the context of what he was talking about. People take things out of context all the time. The New Testament is also clear that we are not supposed to crino judge those in the world, but it does give specific instructions for crino judging those in the church. For example, 1 Corinthians 15, 11 through 12 and 2 Thessalonians 3, 6, concerning Christians practicing sin who won't repent, Paul says, do not even associate with them and even or even share a meal because it is not those inside the church whom you are, is it not? He says, he's asking a question, is it not those inside the church whom you are to crino judge? For, as Peter also says, crema judgment does begin in the house of God. Paul continues, For what have I to do with crino judging outsiders? And in another writing, Paul says, Do you not know that the saints shall in the future crino judge the world? And so if the world is to be crino judged by you, are you incompetent to crino judge trivial cases? They had you know, disputes among themselves, they were supposed to settle these. They were supposed to weigh the evidence, bringing one, one or two witnesses, right? Two or three witnesses. Later in that letter, Paul says, but if we diacrino, discriminately judge ourselves, we should be doing that ourselves, we would absolutely, and he's talking about ourselves, plural, the church should have been doing that, we would absolutely, in fact, not come under continual, repeated crino judging. What was happening? They were getting sick and dying because they were under the judgment. Satan was going at them, man. But when we are crino judged by the Lord, that's judging ourselves, allowing the Lord to judge us, we are being little children trained. There it is, Padaya. I mentioned that in blog topic number one. This is the discipline of the Lord. We are being pedio, where we get pediatrics. This is little children type of training. When we allow the Lord to judge us, when we come under the truth and allow him to look into us and say, you know, that's wrong. You know, that's wrong. Let's get it. So that you may not be caught a crino, that's judged down upon, that's like sentencing along with the world. You know, the world is condemned already. It is catacrino. It says that in John 3, 17. You know, we always like to quote John 3, 16. Oh, God loves, loves the world so much that he sent his own son. But it says they are already condemned. If they don't receive the Lord by faith, they already are sentenced to condemnation. That's what it says in the, in the verses that nobody quotes. This is likely the type of discipline I was talking about in blog topic number one. And there's some other links there you can look at. And there's so many uh, notes here that I just blew right past. So you want to look at all that information. Jesus also gave clear instructions, which few churches follow on dealing with Christians in unrepentant sin. First privately, then with two or three witnesses, then to the whole church. There's a whole process here. Only restoring them gently if they repent, otherwise treating them as they would a Gentile or a tax collector. He's talking to Jews here. Jews knew how to treat a Gentile. You don't eat with them. You don't even go into their house. You do not go into their house or eat with them. That's what they were supposed to do to brothers who would, brothers and sisters who would not repent. Or as a tax collector. They didn't hang out with tax collectors. They were traitors they were sold they were Jews that sold themselves out to the to the Jew to the Roman army to the Roman government and and this is really tough love Jesus is saying you got to do some tough love here Paul also says those of the spirit should restore sinning Christians all right should, of the spirit those of the spirit those who are of the spirit they are spirit guided they are walking by the spirit not in the flesh <laughs> They're not going to get angry and go try to fight, you know, pick a fight. They should restore sinning Christians by the spirit of gentleness for the nature of unconditional love, the singular fruit of the nature of the spirit, includes gentleness. So there's a way to restore these Christians if they repent. 
However, the balance of fair, equitable, just judgment within the church is expressed by James 2, 4. I gave you a bunch of verses. My brethren, there's a balance of fair, equitable, just judgment. My brethren, show impossibility. No behavior in by with uh, there is partiality. Don't show any partial partiality in behavior. If you pay attention to one who wears fine clothing, while you are otherwise, uh, but while you are otherwise to the poor man, so you're showing no attention to them, have not then you diacrino discriminately judged, you're discriminating, right, in your judgment, among yourself, yourselves, these Christians, and thus become judges, like they were judges, with evil, he says, with evil thoughts. Yeah, the, these were judges that were had evil thoughts. They were being discriminating. They were discriminating. They should have shown no discrimination. Just judges. Don't do that. Uh, do not speak evil. And that is unjust, inequitable acquisition, acquisitions, <laughs> ac accusations, I'll get it right, against one another. Christian brethren, the one who judges his brethren speaks evil against the law. See, these were Jewish Christians that he was writing to. And coupled judges the law. See, they were Jewish Christians. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, because they were they were very proud to be following the law. This is this is before Judaism uh, really separated from Christianity. As Paul, Paul really pulled Christianity away from just Judaism. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge, right? You're sitting as a, a judge using the law. But there is only one lawgiver and one judge. So they were like setting themselves up to be God, who is able to save and to destroy. So in other words, he has the right to one pile over the other. But you are to be routinely, but who are you, he says, but who are you to be routinely judging your neighbor? And that was always meant fellow Jews, fellow Jewish Christians. They were, they were judging as if they were the judge, acting like they were the ones using the law. You know, can't do this. So this, this is uh, very troubling. So there's a lot that People don't know about judgment, correct judgment, and incorrect judgment, and it's because they don't really do a thorough under, um, word search through the Greek in the New Testament about judging. So you got to be careful when you quote verses that it's in context and you understand the Greek. <laughs> you don't. English is going to be very misleading. Look at the Bible info pay, page. Here we got it. So. Um, we got a lot of verses here, and so we got to be careful about judging others. So I have some reflection here, as, and you can look at the reflections about how to really take something from this. Really, you should look at this. There is such a lack of understanding and just taking verses out of context. Indiscriminate, partial, or favoritism judgment, judging, yeah, fake showing favoritism, and or certainly sentencing like it's final, like you are God the judge. This is not the law of Christ that to unconditionally love one another, but it is also extremely unloving to not do what Jesus talked about, which was confronting sin in the church, like Paul said, confronting sin in the church. This is not unloving. You're sending those people straight to hell because you're not you're not doing what the New Testament Jesus and Paul said to do. They're going to just go into the world. They're just going to continue to sin thinking it's okay and that there's no consequences to this when there is consequences to this. And uh, you're not you're not telling them the truth. There is consequences to this action. You need to repent and we need to go through this process. So I don't know of one church that does this. I've never seen it. So they're, they're just sending people right to hell, letting them 
commit sin. I had to leave some churches because they were allowing sin just openly in the church. And uh, I said, man, I, I wrote to them and showed them the elders, and I finally had to just say, man, you guys are hypocritical. You say you're Bible-believing, but you don't do the Bible. So how, how do I participate with that? How can I give money to you guys to do that? How can I be in the worship team for you guys to just look the other way? That's what was happening. That's why Paul had to write. That's why Jesus had to say what he said, because people were looking the other way, and it was going to do terrible damage. So there is a tough love, and you have to be in the Spirit. It says those who are, are in the Spirit, those who are Spirit kind of people, they have wisdom and discernment, right, of the Holy Spirit to gently restore and to confront, right, and to... to carefully critique not condemn there's a, it's crino but not katakrino katakrino means to condescend to come down on somebody and to pass final sentence like to write somebody off to put them into two piles and say bye bye you're going to hell you have a special place in hell good luck bye bye and it takes a, somebody in the spirit because if you're in the flesh you're just going to act like people in the flesh. That's the natural man. So, but there is really important judgment that has to be done. So, Jesus is not referring to this kind of judgment when he says, impossibly don't be judged, because he links it to condemnation kind of judge, judging. And he really is talking about forgiving. Um, in many cases, really, personally, it comes down one-on-one, -on -one, you know, forgiving you personally, I need to do something, I need to forgive. So it's all context. Words and, and teachings are all based on context. So look forward to what you guys have to say. There's a lot of verses here I didn't open up. You would see the cases even stronger when you look at all the verses. All right, so definitely hit the link there and go, go for it, right? So be careful when you quote quote things, quote Jesus, quote Paul. Make sure you're quoting in context. You know what the heck they're talking about, all right? God bless.